Good evening, everybody. It is Tuesday, February 17th at, at 5.32 p.m. I am in council chambers along with Municipal Coordinator Duarte, CAO DeJong, and CFO Rook. And this is the Committee of the Whole meeting. And I'm calling the meeting to order and putting forward a motion to adopt the agenda. Can I have a seconder? Thank you. Any changes, amendments? Uh, CAO, do you have any? Nope. Sponsors, anything? Okay, again, this is the uh, Committee of the Whole. Good, nothing. No public, uh, there is no public, so we'll move on to review of, and approval of prior minutes. Uh, Harken back to yesterday, I'm sure it seems like yesterday, but maybe not November 30th and December the 1st. I'll put forward the motion that uh, the Council Strategy Committee meeting minutes of November 30th and December 21st, 2021 be approved and circulated. I have a seconder, thank you. Uh, any discussion? I have none. Uh, just sorry, Ron, can you give me a second? I, I seem to have only opened up the closed meeting packages. Can you give me one sec? Uh, Neville, I'm going to park you for a second. Fred, why don't you go? Uh, yeah, on uh, page, no, the page number is not here. Oh, two, two of four on all the uh, points um, mentioned from staff. Uh, I know it's a discussion point, and so it's not anything we've necessarily agreed to. But uh, down to um, well, about halfway down the page, talking about the bridge designed for forestry access that was repurposed to our needs, not a high or not highway. I do recall mentioning that uh, it was used as a temporary Alberta Creek bridge during the building of the channeling project. Um, I think it's misleading if we just leave it, it's not a highway bridge. It, it, it sounds like it's not robust enough to carry the weight, but it certainly was with those massive I-beams on it. Um, so just point of clarity, if you don't mind. It's fine with me, okay with everybody else? Good. Thank you. Councillor Abbott? I'm really struggling. I tell you what, Councillor Abbott, I need a minute. Why, don't we, why don't we hold this, Councillor Abbott, and we'll come back to it and you can double task. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we'll give you another minute or two. Uh, business arising from the minutes. Uh, I have none. I think we're living the dream here. Uh, as we have, yes. Uh, I just wanted to uh, update council on the asbestos water, uh, water main issue. Hmm. Uh, we did test for asbestos fibers and it came back negative. Uh, we'll continue to test every year and advise council uh, of the results on a yearly basis. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Barmier. That's just a thumbs up to no asbestos. Yeah, that's good news. Thanks, Nye. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And um, all right, anything else on the unfinished business? There being none, we'll, before I go on, uh, Councillor Abbott, are you ready? Um, I think I have a failure. Do we have the same file number description for the closed and the open? I think I just deleted my, all my notes on the open. Oh. <clears throat> As in deleted them on Sunday after I spent all day reading. There's a total of four packages. The only package that was replaced was the regular council meeting package. So there's two closed, two open. Yeah, I have two packages called 220515 COTW package. And one of them, when you open it, One of them in pack is a is got a bracket. The regular three. meeting. The other one has a bracket four. So bracket three is the open. Close, pardon me. Bracket three or bracket four is the open. Uh, both is the same file name and I've deleted all my notes. Uh, I tell you what, Councillor Abbott, I, I know that uh, you were. Why do we open with the stuff. same file name? I. We'll get a chance to this, do this. I mean, we'll, uh, we'll keep looking for it. And uh, if you need a minute to find it, then we'll stop. But let's get on to the key 
purpose of the meeting. And so, uh, Municipal Coordinator, can you remind me that we're basically at the discussion piece on the minutes? They haven't been accepted. And I'd like to conclude them before. Can I take them over to the main meeting, by the way? No. Okay. Well, at the very, what we'll do then is I can pause the meeting to close it. Um, and then we can open it back again when it's Councilor Abbott's found the stuff somewhere during the evening. Sure. Yes. Okay. So, Councilor Abbott, first thing before we go public, tilt your screen a little different. If you're looking kind of just uh, like the guy who hangs onto the wall there, like that. There you go. You're good now. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, unfinished business. Uh, there being none that we haven't talked about. Uh, next is staff reports, and that's the main purpose for this evening. And before I hand it over to CFO Rook, uh, with the four packages, it's a busy and brisk evening tonight. Nothing is going to go unturned. Uh, but what we will do is run out of time. So we started at 5.30, we're moving it along briskly. My proposal is that at 6.30, we uh, stop the regular committee of the whole meeting and we move into in-camera for half an hour. And uh, then we'll go to the open. So uh, what we would do is that during the question, question and answer period of the preliminary budget, what I propose to do is go in alphabetical rotation, starting with Councillor Abbott, uh, concluding with me, and then we'll go through it a second time. Um, I think I know my councillors fairly well. Uh, Councillor Abbott, if I could ask you, uh, mentally time yourself, because I know a municipal coordinator will actually be timing you. If you could hold your Q&A for the first round to 10 minutes, and then we'll go through Councillors Bain, Barmere, Conliffe, and myself, and then we'll go through it again. I trust that will meet with everybody. And again, we're not trying to not leave any questions unanswered. Um, although we will tonight, uh, so, our budget is simply too short. Just to so clarify, we, you'd like a succinct commentary on the information that's been presented today? Yes. Okay, got it. That, that is the sole, primarily the sole purpose for this evening's meeting. Uh, having uh, thought this through, an hour to conduct the budget simply is not enough. Uh, by the end, I will seek recommendations from staff and concur from council how we want to do this again. Uh, because if we're going to keep it away from the main meeting, it is a sole purpose meeting, which I quite like, because we're very focused then, uh, that we'll either set a time or maybe a special meeting. She's got the corporate calendar. So I'm just doing that as some ground rules. So, uh, so our timeline is brisk, not the content. There we go. If that's fine with everybody, then I'll hand it over to CFO Rook. So this is um, Council's first um, look at the 2022 preliminary budget. As in prior years, um, I've done kind of a base budget with the 22 labor model, um, putting in actual expenses we know, like the insurance and the debt financing, and then just working with staff to um, estimate what we need for the 2022 budget, um, particularly operating with regard to looking at what we spent in the prior year and um, setting a budget accordingly. Uh, so the purpose of this meeting is really just for council, for me to go through this budget with council, answer council's questions, and um, say determine how much we get done in this meeting and any future meetings we might need. Um, if you go to page 19, um, that's kind of a one page summary of the budget. I anticipate we'll be going through all the other pages on each of the departments. Um, individually um, to answer council's questions. But this is a summary of the revenue and it's, it's a summary of all the attached schedules and the expenditures by department. But then we also come down to the bottom part which shows just draws from reserves, um, from and to reserves um, to come to the cash surplus of 60,000. So that's with a placeholder of a 0% tax increase, um, we have a surplus of 60,000 which technically should cover um, all of the, at least the operational supplemental requests, but also um, hopefully some of the capital. So that will be supplemented with whatever tax increase um, council determines, but that wouldn't be at this meeting. This meeting is really just to get a comfort level around the budget and um, get an opportunity for council to get clarification on any of the numbers. So I think at that point, it's probably best just to jump into the round table and having me answer any questions. Thank you very much, uh, CFO. And um, Councillor Abbott, if you're ready to go. Uh, no, I'm not. Can I go last? Uh, fine, that'll be fine. Uh, Councillor Bain, do you want to go first? 
No, it's okay answer. I'll keep going. I'm happy to start, but I'll go through the other councillors first. Okay, um, what I've got through the committee of the whole agenda doesn't match what uh, what Pam's talking about, so I must have the wrong agenda or up on my screen. Um, could somebody clarify where I'd find the other one? Uh, I can resend it. Okay. Good. That would be handy. Well, I, okay. Thanks. So we'll uh, we'll park the two councillors, Councillor Barmer. Um, okay, so I just, I guess I have just a, sort of a series of maybe questions and comments, and um, I'm glad that we'll have another opportunity to discuss these things. Um, the first sort of question I have is, we've made quite a bit of money on parking, uh, so there seems to be a good <clears throat> amount of cash that came in the door. So a general question was, if there's any appetite to leverage some of that income against infrastructure upgrades in the form of grants, applying for grants, so parking that money and using it to leverage for grant money, um, whether that's um, green grants for infrastructure improvement as they relate to improving the village hall or whether that's um, uh, EV grants <clears throat> sort of in a transportation thread because we've already got a standing um, resolution to pursue. Uh, EV infrastructure. And to my knowledge, that resolution hasn't been rescinded, so it's still active. It's still um, a council objective to be met. Um, so that was one of my sort of comments or questions. You know, we've got some money in the kitty there. Can we can we allocate that some of that towards uh, leveraging it for grants? Um, the second comment that I have, and I just made some notes on your uh, report, Pam. So just bear with me here. Um, it's probably along the same vein. Uh, it, so I look at page 32 of 44, where it talks about general fund planning and development. And what there just seems to be a gap. We, we had budgeted $25,000 for uh, um, an EV grant in past budgets. That, that seems to have disappeared. So I don't know if that's not being rebudgeted or if it just got dropped. I was actually hoping we could beef that up based on what we learned last year and our inability to apply for a grant because we just hadn't budgeted for enough. Um, so I guess there's a bit of a conversation to be had around that because budgeting doesn't mean we're gonna spend it. It's just an opportunity to apply for more money. So I just want that to be clear. Um, you know, if, if we, don't wanna, we don't wanna be in the same position where we can't actually apply for something. And I think the last piece I had was on page 41 of 44. Um, I guess I, there's a few more, but it just seems like we've added an awful lot of things here that I didn't realize we were calling priorities at all. So one of them being the official community plan budgeting of $50,000. I find that troubling. I don't feel like this is a priority. Um, because we have to first start spending money against the original objectives in the OCP before we start spending money to redo the OCP. I don't see any urgency at all here. Uh, we're a small community with very strong communication channels to our, to our residents. We do lots of public outreach. We do our have your say on a regular basis. People know what we're up to. And when we put an idea out there, the public lets us know if they like it and they definitely let us know if they don't like it. So we have the ear of the community and I find this $50,000 for an OCP up, update, I find it uh, money ill spent. So I'd rather see that go towards infrastructure. I'd rather see that money parked for a grant opportunity. Um, the Lions Bay Avenue connector project, I know we're budgeting for it, but I, I just wonder if we still have an opportunity to rank this in the eyes of the community where it fits in in sort of priorities of, of projects. I just wanna keep that uh, conversation open. And the last piece here that I had a comment on, uh, this caught me off guard, the Calvin Grove Beach Park Bridge for $60,000. I don't remember talking about that once in five years, so I have no idea why that's here. And I'm, I'm just opening up the question. If I missed the conversation or if I wasn't paying attention, I apologize, but this one catches me off guard. And I'd rather spend that $60,000 plus the $50,000 on the OCP amendment. I'd rather put that money in a kitty to leverage against grant opportunities that will be coming out in the spring, sometime in March or April. Uh, so I'd rather set us up for a win there and, and uh, uh, make more money as opposed to just spending it. 
So th that's my comment. Uh, thanks. I just, um, a couple of things I just wanted to clarify. Um, sorry, on the planning, um, there's, we put the EV charges in two different places. Uh, these departmental, this is just operating costs. So this was the, um, the design of the EV. I think we originally we had 5,000 and this is just showing how much we're tracking and how much we're rebudgeting. But in terms of the actual EV charging station, that would go into capital. And the only reason I don't have it there for the 2022 year is I thought by the time we um, find a grant and apply for it and find out whether or not we're successful, it would be a 2023 expense. So that would be in the five-year plan, but we're just looking at 2022 here now. And so, then, so Pam, can I, before we go, can we just, um, yeah. can you, just give me a, an opportunity because, because we had a grant come up in 2021, we hadn't budgeted enough, so we didn't apply. So I just don't want that to happen again because the 2022 grants will come out in the spring. So that's happening in March. Zivik will be launching a new round of grants. And in order for us to apply, we have to have money in the bank. That's what I understood. If I got that wrong, I'm, you know, I'm happy to be, you know, I'm happy to be, you know, I defer to your advice, Pam, but I just don't want us to be in the same position where a grant comes out in March and we can't apply for it because we didn't budget. Okay. Um, yeah, you are right, actually, with some of the grant applications, they want to sh show that you have the money, and we can cover that off of the grant resolution. So it wasn't in any way dismissing the EV charger. It wasn't my recollection that the reason we didn't apply for that one was because we didn't have the funds and hadn't budgeted it, because that could be taken care of with the council resolution. Um, I thought it was just because at that point, we didn't feel it was the right fit, but I, I could be mistaken about that. So, you know, with council's direction, that's something we can add to the capital list is the EV charger. Like I said, I was just trying to budget for projects that um, would actually happen in 2022, but we also don't want to hinder any future applications. I definitely agree with that. Um, and just a, a point of clarification, when you say putting money in the kitty, um, we actually at this point do not, the only way we're paying for any of this capital and supplemental um, other than some of the operating is we draw us from surplus. So we're drawing from the money that's already in the kitty, uh, so to speak. So I didn't want to imply that there was this huge surplus of funds that we could draw from. As you can see, this budget only generates about $60,000 like without a tax increase. So I agree, one of the priorities is going through the capital and prioritizing it because all of this has to be drawn from the kitty in order to pay for it. It's not like a surplus of cash that's sitting around for us to decide how to spend on it. Our surpluses, as we've talked about, although they're getting a little more robust, still are not very good. So there definitely has to be a prioritization on what council wants to draw from surplus and reserves to pay for the capital. So um, I just wanted to sort of clarify that. But yeah, your point about the EV charger, we can definitely, definitely add that. I just hadn't seen any grants yet, um, but it would be a 2022 expense. Um, Sorry, did you want to... Oh, uh, I thought that um, if we, I think when we are applying for a grant, we have to show that we've got the resolution stipulating that we're good for the municipal portion and where we're going to be pulling it from. Um, but we could do that through showing that it's in the five-year plan under 2023. It doesn't have to be in the 2022 budget year. Yeah. Right. And just usually, to clarify. Yeah. And they usually point. don't even okay. need to show it in the budget. They just want a council resolution stating how we would fund our share. And we either fund it through a loan, which we do with our larger ISIP grants, or we fund it through a draw from reserves. And then I show them the um, basically our financial statement showing how much money we have in reserves. So that part's taken care of. Okay. So that that I guess that's my fear. I was I was so disappointed last time around because I got the sense it was because we didn't budget for it. So I just want yeah. I just want that to be understood. Um, I do feel like there's lots of uh, infrastructure grants coming out that can can align with us in the spring. Um, Clean BC is putting out a lot of money. Um, so it just, I just want us to be in a position to take advantage of that uh, and not be caught off guard. And on that note, I think it might be coming up in the regular meeting, um, just the Clean BC grant is out. I believe the um, Climate Action Committee spoke about it yeah. for this one is more suited to us for the renovations to the hall. We actually didn't qualify for the other grant, as you remember, in November. Yeah. Um, this one is an ICIP grant, which I, I anticipate working having the climate action can really help us with that grant because it's a very yeah. technical grant due in May. 
Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thanks for clarifying that. Just on the same note as my previous comment, that grant, <clears throat> we wouldn't get uh, knowledge of whether we succeed at it or not, assuming we apply, until 2023. Right. So similarly, that would be putting money into the five-year financial plan to show that we're planning to do that in 2023 and, and then support it with a resolution. Yeah, so in terms of the process, we're looking at 2022, but at the same time, it's not a closed box. So I'm already making notes that EV Charger and um, hopefully the council approves that the CA's the grant um, for the renovations, <laughs> that would go into the 2023 plan. So it would be budgeted. But I'm, you know, it's, I want to budget in the year. We actually anticipate that we would spend it. And they actually say in the grant guide for the Clean BC grant, they will not be making any decisions. We wouldn't be notified if we were successful until the summer of 2023. Okay. Thanks, Pam. Appreciate it. Public Works Manager. Yeah, I also want to just quickly touch on the bridge to the point at Calvin Grove. Um, I, we've had a couple of residents that have uh, expressed some concern about accessing that point. Um, so we engaged a company to come out and take a look at the, the access and see if we could bridge, uh, bridge the gap um, with the creation of uh, lot 145 access to that point has been uh, mixed because people would have to cross private property. Uh, so uh, again, we had a contractor come out. Initially, his thought was that it was gonna be 60,000. Um, I didn't have time to update the budget. We have a revised cost and it's 23, 24 plus tax. Uh, so it's not 60, um, but it, it's definitely a, a nice to have that's, um, that's come up. Yeah. And on that note, um, the things Graham, that happened can I, can in I, Capitol, these sorry, are things Graham? that... Graham, can, I, can I just interrupt because there's a question about this bridge. I'm, I'm still struggling to catch up and I'm listening. What exactly are we talking about? Uh, the bridge? Yeah, yeah. sorry, th let me just jump in here, Nigel. Sure. Exactly. Explain this. So, so Kelvin Grove Park, um, it has uh, part of the park is the point of land which is beyond 135 now developed 135 45 kelvin grove um, previously one could access the point by walking across that undeveloped lot um, technically that would be trespassing but that's what people used to do in order to access the point of land which is part of the park since the development of the lot that's no longer possible uh, there have been various uh, comments uh, about the inability of people to access that part of the park. So we looked into what does that look like? And, uh, and, and that's basically what this is about. It's- uh, okay, Sorry, Peter, um, maybe for my benefit and then maybe just in case anyone else is confused. So you go behind the washrooms, you've got that grassy area. There's a bit of a gully that comes in there you used to be able to trespass to go around that gully. You want to put a bridge over that gully? It's a walkway, yeah. Okay, yes. it's a walkway over that, okay. That's the concept. Right. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's the concept. Yeah, and that's all I was going to say about the, about the capital. Um, I mean, we could, if council wants, I mean, get the operational questions asked and then go through the capital, kind of line by line, giving more information. Like this was a preliminary look. And these ideas aren't prioritized. They're just um, requests from the fire department and public works and things that have been mentioned to us throughout the year. And um, some requests have come from council. So it's no way um, indicative of, you know, even staff priorities. We just wanted to get it all out there so you could see it. We may be missing some things and giving a sense to discuss them, prioritize them, and then in future meetings, you know, wean it down and decide what we want in the budget. So I didn't want to imply in any way that this is staff's, some of these things are obviously from staff, but um, we just wanted to put it out there so council could um, see all the different ways in which the money could be spent and we can cut it completely as well, depending on council's um, desire. Thank you very much. Councillor Barmier, are you done? Yeah, sorry, by that I meant, do you have any more questions? You're good for now. I think we'll everybody will have a chance to come back. Councillor Kella? 
sorry, good to just sorry, listen and sorry, observe Ron, at this just, point. Sorry, Jamie. Uh, just to yep. flip through the chair, Rod. Sorry. Um, Pam just suggested that we did the operational stuff, even though Norm's touched on the capital, and then we all do the capital line by line. Are we going to do that? I, I agree. I think it's a much better suggestion. Yeah. It might be um, easier than jumping around a bit. So I should have suggested at the beginning. Well, I wish you talked to me first since I was going to go right to capital, but I'll accept that hit for the team. I'll stick to operational. Let's do that. If we make it to capital tonight, otherwise, fine. Okay. Did you want to start with capital? No, no, no. I, no we're no, on capital operational. is important. We could start well, with that. Um, or... You know what, I've got, I've, got, I've got two points for the operational, then I'll be quiet, and then it'll go to Neville, and there we go. If that's fine, so, all right, uh, so Councillor Cunliffe, sorry, I forgot your answer, I apologize. I said I'm happy to just listen and observe at this point. Thank you very much. We will ask you to weigh in later, though. Uh, thank you, everybody. And um, again, just to repeat, we aren't going to rush this budget through. If it takes uh, one or two more meetings, that's what it'll take. Um, and we will work around if there's a preference by council to continue with an earlier start to get it, that's all the better. I've got two things, and I guess I I hate the fact that here we've done so many good things as council has in four coming up to four years, but no matter how good it is, it's just simply not good enough. And the reality is that we um, We've got limited capacity to do things. Our revenue stream is very slim and we've got a future that we don't know about. So I think in terms of this year's budget, I'm going to continue on with what I consider to be the hard love of reality. And to that extent, uh, my recommendation will be, and there's, I'm just picking the number because it'll generate $86,000. It's a 5% general tax increase. Uh, I think uh, two and a half barely matches uh, our compensation to our staff and other rises and everything is rising in the universe for a variety of reasons. So I'll put that out as a place mark now and I'll consider that a generation of 86. On page 32 of 44, there is uh, two pieces. I'm trying to make uh, a decent swing of the bat here. There are rebudgeted items, one for 7,500, one for 25,000. And the first one is for communications consultant, and the second one is planning consultants. I think in the seven months that we've got left, that we could probably waive both of those. We're probably not going to use a planning consultant. So the $7,500 will simply drop off the expense line and sit where it currently is in notional reserves. Same thing, I really don't see a planning consultant coming along, and uh, nor have I heard an immediate desire for one. So between the two, that's 32,000 there and 86. So there's a hundred grand and a meaningful piece to balancing our budget. Recognizing their budget. So after I move them for the expense, I also remove the draw from surplus. So it's a net it's zero, it's a net zero impact. So it's fine, but just understand. I, I just I just I just don't want to see it there. It's, we're not, I don't think we're gonna spend it. So that would be my piece on the operational, other than one more question. Hang in there, Councillor Barmer. Um, uh, to the CFO, how much is left to go to the Provincial Restart Fund? There's some illusion of a couple of projects in your profile here, but what is the number more or less? It's around 145000 left for 2022, which we will have to um, spend in 2022. And what I've um, so far um, have in the budget that we're, what I'm drawing from to pay for is the additional bylaw enforcement hours, because um, as you can see from that Page, I uh, budgeted the same amount of hours that we had last year, a bylaw officer, a single one, Monday to Thursday, and then two um, Thursday, or sorry, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and staff holidays with the third called in when busy. Um, so there's that money. I have 7,000 for washroom cleaning, COVID supplies, 3,000. And I have a few things proposed in the supplementals to be funded okay. by that. And that would pretty much use up the balance. Like Perfect. I said, there is That's, an expectation that okay. it all be used up in 2022. Thank you very much. I just couldn't find it all. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go back to uh, Councillor Abbott. Those are my operational issues. So, sorry, before, before we do, if, if I could just please jump in one second. With respect to your suggestion to kill those two items, uh, perhaps think about it, stick it in, the, in your craw to think about is putting aside 
some of this money for the OCP planning process. I'll, as, I'll as take a contribution. Uh, thank you very to, much, CEO. To that I, I can rant on about the OCP uh, at length. Councillor Barmer, if we'll go to you, you first. Yeah, just, sorry, just sort of, you know, I, I know if this is the right bucket planning and development, but if we are looking to apply for a bigger grant, uh, the one Pam had circulated to the CAC, there's elements in that grant that will, will require some effort. Um, capital cost estimating, uh, greenhouse gas reduction uh, calculations where we could use a consultant, potentially hiring someone to help write a grant. This, these, are, these are pretty heavy efforts. And I think budgeting for a grant writer and some support is probably not, uh, uh, you know, it's worth considering. All right, well, uh, the notes are being taken by uh, the coordinator. So we're gonna see this next meeting when we retract this. So there we go. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Barman. Councillor Abbott, uh, I've got my watch on. you got 10 minutes if you want to. Okay. Do you um, have the right document? Let's start there. So, um, hopefully not to sound like a stuck record from previous years. This idea of separating the operating cost, the true operating cost, and understanding how we do on those year on year, and I, I just, and I just really feel like we such so, so much cleaner if we just had those in one place for the true operating costs are, and then we can talk about stuff that has been um, capex, and then I would also like to see coming out of that something that says, you know, over with infrastructure levy we've raised 450k in three years, 600 by the end of this year. Um, spent on capex, we've done this, this, and this, funded from reserves X, reserves have gone up or down, even a, a graph, a trend that shows you whether the reserves have gone up or down over the, over the four years, and, and just make it much cleaner and simpler than instead of all these numbers. I, I think that'd be a huge benefit, um, and I'd still like to try to do that. And when, and I, you know, I'll just pick a, maybe a really silly one that, um, you know, that's, that's obvious to me, you know, transfer from surplus, bottom, sorry, of pages, bottom of page 19, transfer from surplus, Curly Stewart Award, 750 bucks. Well, in actual fact, we raised more than 750 bucks last year. It's not costing the tax, shouldn't cost the taxpayers anything in actual fact, even though I know we still have budget every year on the year for 500. Um, definitely the extra 250 is coming out of the Curly Stewart funds. And in actual fact, Pam, as you know, we've got 10 grand sitting there. So we shouldn't need to take anything out of Curly Stewart. And that committee is determined to get it to a point that you know, it's self-funding. So, and I, I know that's a really small amount, but I'm just picking it because it's a really obvious one to anyone that looks at this. Oh, we're transferring from our surplus 750 bucks for Curly Stewart. No, actually we raised, we raised more than that in grants last year. We did, but I think but, that the reason and I-, I know, Rick, Pam, and I know you, I know this is presented accurately for accounting. I'm just trying to think if there's a way to dumb it down for those of us that are on accountants. And I know what seems really obvious and easy to you, maybe I'm the only dim-witted one, it's not that obvious to others. So, yeah. You know. anyway, no, that's a, just that's a general thing point. I think we should keep working on. I think that's an important point that we, this is the first year we've done that. We've been taxing for it every year. And the direction from the Curly Stewart Committee was they didn't want to do any that anymore. You had a really excellent fundraising. Like you say, there's over 10,000 in the reserve now. So I did this in isolation. This won't, I, I deliberately showed this level of detail to show that we're not taxing for the Curly Stewart this year, but we still have to get $750 for the award. So I'm showing that we're drawing it from the surplus. It's not up above in expenses. All the other years. Above. So, and I, and I realize it can be confusing, but that's why I wanted to show that level. You can see the same above for the election. Every year we tax a portion of the election so that in the election year, we don't have to come up with 15,000. So we're gonna pay a few thousand this year for the election and draw 13,500 mm -hmm. from reserves. So this is money that we've, um, for the election we've taxed previously. And in the case of the Curly Stewart, it's coming from the Curly Stewart surplus. So I think it's important to show it this way. And I, I did it actually for your benefit because I wanted it to be very clear. You commented prior that you yeah. didn't want to tax for the Curly Stewart. And this is showing that we're not. Anything below the line here, we're not taxing for. We're drawing from funds that have been raised through fundraising, previous taxation, um, surplus, things like that. So that's why that shifts to that very point. We're not taxing for it.
but I have to pay for it. So I either tax for it or I draw it from the surplus. Yeah, and, and you've explained that before and I, and, I, and I do understand it. I just think that many people are gonna look at something that says transfer from surplus and think oh, it's coming out of the village's cash reserves in some yeah. out of village surplus. Okay, I mean, I can change the wording, say transfer from the Curly Stewart surplus, but the money has to come from somewhere. <laughs> okay. But if, yeah. if somehow uh, that could somehow be clearer in, in general, that it's not, you know, I mean, that it's coming from something, same way as you do the rebudgeting thing. Um, I'm going to yep. yeah, jump down five, quickly five, on, five, on a few five. points because because I think Pam used at least five of my 10 minutes. Um, on that, page- Q&A doesn't work that way, by the way. And sorry, on what page, Councillor Adams? Page 22. Okay. Um, new laptop for Zoom council meetings, et cetera. Surely that could be COVID funded as well. Um, yes. Who's that? This is, um, this is the IT support for it. Um, kind of the general operation, we're gonna have that continued expense every year. I was just explaining why the, um, the communications costs have come up so much. When we have extra laptops, there's related annual IT costs. You saw it in the EOC as well, with all the new computers we have, why the IT costs went up so much. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll keep that one, because you said you seemed to have the COVID thing covered. I just thought that that would be something that came about because of COVID. Um, so we could keep taking it out of COVID until it ended. Um, no, I guess my point is it's gonna be a continued annual cost as long as we have that computer. So, I mean, we could take it out for 2022, but after that, we'll have to fund it with taxation. We'll start funding, yeah. I thought that would be reasonable. I'm gonna jump down the other stuff because I think we do wanna spend some time on the on the CAPEX stuff. Um, just one question you've, you got the uh, bylaw officers, same hours as previous year. Did you use the same actual hour, same budgeted hours, or did you use the actuals? Um, I used the budget because the budget was yeah, a little okay. bit so, that's right. a slow start. So I thought the hours would go up this year because it took us a while to get the third bylaw officer last year. Okay. So if you use the budgeted hours, same hours as last year, how did we get an 8.7% increase? Did these guys get a 9% increase in rate? So what page are you on? Page 30. Telling us use the same hours as last year, but the dollars went up by nine, eight point seven percent. So did the bylaw officers get a nine percent increase? It'd be, it'd be the hourly rate would be the only differential. Um, if we use the same hours and didn't get an increase, the number should be zero. Well, they will be. Well, just go back to that pen. It's not hold the meeting up. So, no, Councilor Rabbit, if you're fine, we'll hold that one and let the CFO respond some other time. Okay. okay. Um, I also highlighted, you know, communication consultant and planning consultants as as stuff that we 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 don't need anymore. We we shouldn't need now. Um, I don't think they're going to happen. So I had those two highlighted. I've already mentioned those. Um, I really am going to flick through. Some of the stuff I'm not even mentioned, some of the stuff because I, I wanted to get to the capex. Um, smoke testing for pumps at treatment plant. No, that's not the same issue as we think we might have with smoke testing of Calvin Grove. Uh, uh, sorry, what pumps. page, Neville? Sorry, page 40 or 44. Budget includes 10K for smoke testing and 20,000 for pump outs at treatment plant. So that's no, smoke testing in the that is plant. that is smoke testing of the sewer system that we talked about pipeline. previously. That's ten thousand okay. dollars, and the twenty-five k is the annual cost of pump okay. outs. So this ten k for smoke testing—that's the same issue that you've raised with potential. Um, I and I. In, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. That's rabbit trying to roll, keep going. Well, I think I got to the capex, didn't I? 
Oh, are you... supplemental? Are we doing supplemental requests and capex line by line? No, let's do uh, let's do the whole operating and capital thing at the same time, if that's fine. Uh, here's what I propose one once more quickly through the councillors then uh, to see if everybody has another question or comment they wish to make, and then we'll go to the uh, if you flip to page 41 and 44, then we'll do the operating on the and the capital ask. Uh, Councillor Bain, are you good? Um, yeah, I, I have to apologize. I, I didn't have a look at the operating prior to now. I'm, so I don't think I should comment and uh, let my time go to others. Uh, that's fine, but uh, if you thank you uh, to, to offer your time. If you want to send it in writing to everybody and to the executive staff, we'll count that in uh, for the next time out. Councillor Barmier, any comments anymore? And then we'll go to the CapEx stuff. No, I'm I'm good. Sorry, I went across the whole thing right at the beginning. I, I missed the protocol. Sorry, there was no protocol because <laughs> so to do it because in fact in question. fact you were kind of like uh, on the free range there. So you skated. There you go. You're good. Thank you, Councillor Kenlet. Uh, any questions? Or are you good with the flow? We'll presume Councillor Kenlet's good with the flow. And so sorry, I just minimized my screen, but yes, I'm good. I thought I, I thought I just kicked myself out of the meeting. No, no, that's good. fine. It that doesn't work that way, Councillor Khan. Uh, thank you very much for coming back for us. Okay, so we're back to page 41 and 44. Uh, yes. What I propose is that we'll do this in reverse order now. And I will go first, and then uh, mm. Councillors Kunlov, Barmier, Bain, and Abbott. And I would ask, um, in terms of the time that we've got here, I'm, I'm not going to do any politicking, and I suggest nobody else do it either, that the staff will take kind of a, a stream of polls, so we might see a grid on this some, at the next meeting or something like that. So I'll be very quick, and again, I'm starting on page 41. <clears throat> Operational building and equipment appraisals seems like a hard yes to me. The two COVID grants are a yes. Uh, the official community plan, I'll stop there, and I'll say 50,000 is my input for that. Uh, Belcara just undertook a, an OCP and it's $100,000. I checked with Anmore today. The last one they did was $100,000 and that included a financial plan too. Uh, I would suggest that at our 51st year and with significant uh, urban to rural changes a requirement for housing development and all the rest, there is no time like now that we need professionals to go <coughs> street by street, house by house to ensure that third party validation of our residents' views is valid. <clears throat> so I also like the idea of the CAO is that if we moved off the uh, planning and consultant communication, there's 32 and a half of it, that's a possibility. So I'm a strong yes on the OCP. I'm <clears throat> painfully a yes on the CN crossing. I am a no, I can push some things off as we've done so much on the drainage master plan, uh, but it's on my radar now. <laughs> Road paving and repairs. I'm a yes. I would ask that the um, that uh, this come out of our our gas tax fund. I'm not sure where it fits into this, but I don't think we've actually used the gas tax fund. High priority bridge repairs. I am a yes on that. Uh, on the beach park, I'm a yes on that. On the connector, I'm a yes on that. And uh, CFO and uh, reporter, could you put? 68667 from reserves, as is noted above, because I don't think we did a borrowing resolution. KG Park, I'm a no at 60. I'm a strong maybe at 24. I believe for the work shard, uh, 90 and 90 with two 20 annual payments, I'm fine with. This uh, Salter for the flat deck, fine. Fire department, I'll call it gear, the 55 grand, fine. Uh, the forklift backhoe, I'm a yes. Uh, the G3 is small, fine. Uh, the washer and dryer for turnout gear, I am a no. I think they can fund for that. Uh, and I thought Just a I... point on that. Um, that's already been ordered. That was actually a 2021 budget item, but it was delayed because of all the um, issues with supply chain. So, so we've committed to that one way or the other? We've, we've ordered it. It's being delivered in May, which actually ties so in. So then that back. should be from reserves? since we've notionally agreed to it. Thank you. And I've been quick on this one. Uh, I thought I saw, oh, sorry, the 
I stand corrected, use forklift backhoe uh, for auto extrication training for 30. I think that, sorry, I stand corrected. That should be the fundraising piece. And I apologize. So the 30 grand, I think they can fundraise this over a period. And on the washer dryer, thank you, CFO. That would be it for me. And going backwards, Councillor Barman. I'm good, thank you. Great, Councillor Kenlin, if I jumped past you, but so if you bypass Councillor Barman too. I would just like to say that, yeah, I'm soft on the, the 50 grand for the OCP. Um, I could live without that being there for this time. And when it, I'm a yes for the beach or the, the connector, the beach park for sure. And I would be, I would be happy to see $24,000 spent on regaining public access to that point. It is a beautiful little spot and people have been missing the access to it. The only way out there really is to swim or it's dangerous. So for 24 grand, I think it would be well worth investing in our public spaces. I, I, I like that number more than 60, which was a hard note for me. Yeah, actually. absolutely. There you go. Are you good with that then, Councillor? Yes. Uh, good. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Bain and then Councillor Abbott. Sorry, one, one interjection. Um, the drainage, I'm kind of sitting on the fence. I do hear a lot of comments about drainage from residents in the village. So I, I definitely think that's something that needs to stay as a priority. Okay, just on that one, I'll, I'll hold your thought on that one. To uh, public works manager, so this uh, the drainage piece here that's uh, that's got the big number on it. So is that basically for engineer an engineering study? Yeah, essentially we would go out to an engineering firm to look at a holistic drainage plan that will talk about the different areas, uh, where they would drain, uh, the sizes that we need, pipe sizes that we need, driveway culvert sizes that we need. Um, so yeah, basically it's it's an engineering study that would be RFP'd. Village? The whole village, yes. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Rabich, uh, you can close. And you've got five minutes to do so. Um, okay. Um, now the, uh, the summer help. I uh, just have one question on that. You mentioned vegetation and trimming of works. This is going to be handwork, correct? Because I think we have a, a loose agreement, if not a regulation, that says we're not going to be cutting in the songbird nesting season, which is when your summer work campaign. Um, yeah, that's a good point, Councillor Abbott. Yes, it mostly mostly weed whacking and um, hedge trimmers, that sort of stuff. But be yeah, some sort of I, protocol to make sure there's no nesting there before they do it. And uh, actually, right actually, we would probably push the season. So rather than summer, it would be autumn, fall help. Okay, I'm. I would be more positive if that was the case. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the bins, just let me get this clear. So we're replacing nine existing bins. And these are the ones that are, are not bare bins, right? These are all plastic bins, yes. Those, those plastic ones. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of money, but it's something close to my heart, so. Yeah, I'm the bear, bear proof bins aren't, uh, aren't cheap. Yeah. Councilor Rabbit, I hate to press you, but uh, I'd like you to rattle through the list if you can, please. Um, all right, I won't spend as much time on the OCP as you did then. Um, I will say I'm a hard no for the reasons that others have suggested. And I, don't, I think the next council gets to decide whether they want an OCP. And I do echo Norm's sentiments that um, we can get a lot less, um, much, we have a good read on what the community wants. And we don't have to spend 50 grand to confirm that. And I think we could do a very simple OCP update. I think it's largely what people want. So I'm a hard no on that. Um, engineering traffic review. Now we've discussed this before. I was just still battled to understand how we can get that done for less than that. We really just need an engineer's letter. We will uh, try to do our okay. best to bring it down. Um, drainage master plan. Well, I've been talking about this for a while. I, I really wanted to try some sort of field fit um, rather than spend too much money on an engineer, a desktop 
engineering, but I'm happy with budgeting for it. I still think I'll you have to do the you have to do the calculations to determine the drainage flows and and the amount of water that yeah. uh, will run off. Well, we, we've had that discussion before. And yeah, okay, we can come back to. It. But I'm happy to see we budget something. I'm just not sure I agree with the execution plan. Um, road paving, we had 125 year on year. I think we spent 150 the last couple of years. Um, is that why we've gone up to 200? Is that we're going to pay on 200 uh, a year now? No, the next stretch uh, is the stretch of Ocean View from uh, 270 down. Uh, and we'd like to get as much done as we can, uh, considering the condition of that road. Okay, so it'll be one, 200 this year, then we go back to the normal next year. Sure. Potentially. Okay, um, repairs on eight bridges. Are we talking about the one bridge? No, this is, oh. um, this is one new. Bridge. One bridge is not on the table on this part. You know, it's enclosed. This is new. Essentially what happened during the winter, uh, we had severe cracking and spalling of the concrete in several of the bridges. Uh, we called uh, ISL out uh, and this is emergency work that has to be done to repair our bridges. Um, the Cross Creek Bridge, the Isle View Bridge uh, and several others. Okay, so this is um, ceiling of cracks. It's actually, yeah, ceiling of concrete, the concrete superstructure of the bridge. Like injection. Before, like injection before corrosion starts taking effect on the interior steel. Okay. Yeah, all right, so that was a new one. Thanks for explaining. Yeah. Um, uh, beach Park, I think everyone knows my opinion. So I think we should look at keeping as descoped as possible. Connect everyone knows my opinion. Can't revisit that. We lost and voted and lost. Um, 60 grand now down to 24. I I don't know. I need to look at that. I understand it would be very nice to have. Um, I just think we need to look at that in as, as a weird list on priorities with others. So I'm going to be a little bit on the fence on that one. Oh, oh, we've been a hard mode, 60. Um, skid steers and mini excavator. So, so both those basic. pieces of equipment are uh, very old. They're not even tier one class equipment. So emissions are super, super high on them. And the other issue is uh, the cab on the mini excavator is rusted through. Uh, so it's basically, you can push the cab off the, the chassis. Um, and the Bobcat, they're two heavy pieces of equipment that get heavy use throughout the year. Um, okay, so I, I read this as skid steer was replacing the Bobcat, um, whether it's a skid steer or not, I don't care. And yeah. I thought the mini excavator was new. So the mini excavator is also a replacement? Correct. Okay, and they've just passed their life, right? Yeah. Um, Twice salt over. For the, for the truck, is that a replacement or do we now no, have an extra that's, salt truck? That's an additional salter. Um, when we outfitted the trucks originally, when we bought them in 2019, the salt deck was not outfitted for a salter at that time. Okay. So we're asking so for, for, for a salting. salter. A salter for the flat deck, yes. Okay. All right, sounds like money well spent. Um, fire department gear, I'll skip over that for now. Um, I don't, I, I don't, I don't understand the auto extrusion training backhoe thing. And somebody have to explain that. To yeah, me. so essentially they use a forklift uh, to move uh, the the husks of vehicles around as they're training and doing their auto extrication. So they'll move a vehicle out, they'll do their training on it. Once it's been crushed and cut, cut apart, they'll use the backhoe or the, the forklift to move it out. So that's how they arrange their vehicles when they do the auto X training. And they, do they do this every, every Wednesday night or once a month or how often? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. We'd have to check with Andrew, but it, it's fairly frequent. Um, it's everything from auto fire to jaws of life to any sort of training. Uh, and it all pertains to the Sea to Sky Highway and accidents. 
So cutting people out of cars, putting out car fires, et cetera. Yeah, well, I, the, reason, the reason I asked, <clears throat> the thought was, is doing their frequent draws, um, could they use a piece of the workshop equipment rather than spending $30,000? Yeah, it's it's a different class of forklift. Our forklift would not be able to carry the the cars that they they do training on. Sometimes trucks, etc. Their current unit is well past its life. It's leaking hydraulic fluid. Um, it, it's in in need of at least a, a fifteen thousand dollar repair job, uh, and I think that's what's driving Andrew's request. Okay. Um, and then you may not be able to answer this, or maybe Payne can, but if I, am I reading this right? So the old small engine that's you know, past use and useless and is many years old, um, were you able to sell for 10 grand, but we're able to get a new one or a much newer one for 10, seven and D Delta's only 700 bucks? Yeah, so the district of North Van is providing us with a, or providing Andrew with a used small truck that they used for the same purpose um, so at a very discounted find rate. to pay 10 grand for our other one then? Uh, that's what they would like to try and get. <laughs> okay, we're going to steal and we're so we, 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 we looking for a sucker. I like it, all right. The reason this is on here, I realize it's only 700, but um, we have to budget it in 2022. We've already bought it. <laughs> it was in last year's budget. And just again with delays, um, I worked with North Vancouver to um, get all the insurance and we took delivery of it two weeks ago. So we have it, but so it's almost a technicality, but I have to put it in the budget. I realize it's a little silly to have $700 on a capital request list, but, um, and then obviously, so the 10,007 we've already paid, um, the proceeds from the sale of the old truck. Yeah, we, we really have no idea. I think there's been a tentative offer made about six months ago, but I don't know how realistic it was. Okay. Last two items, no? Um, no, I don't have any comment on the last one. Thank you very much. Uh, here's what I suggest colleagues, is that I will ask staff now, uh, the <clears throat> council members have defined on a, a variety of the things, um, very big picture on the operational side, very more directed on the operational and the capital budget. Uh, I think that uh, we'll leave it with the CFO to do the changes on the operational as she thinks. On the budget side, just so we don't go over this again, uh, I think it would be helpful if this could be on a grid or a spreadsheet for the next time out so everybody can see where they are on this one. And so what are <clears throat> For the operational and the capital. Otherwise, we're going to have the same discussion all over again. Yeah, so I just don't understand what you mean by a grid. Uh, Many people were in favor of many of the items. Some were opposed to some of them. You mean just the, I can't do that, the operating, you're talking about the capital? Yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, so thank you very much. So let's conclude that one. Uh, during, we're going to uh, tidy up here and go into in-camera very quickly. Um, so I think the next piece is mayor reports. I have none, council members. I think probably not for the committee as a whole and committees the same thing. There being none, new business, none. Uh, public questions, there isn't a member of the public here. Uh, so we will um, not close. We will go into closed in a committee of the whole format. Nope. Yes. So, and the reasons that we will go are for reasons in the absence, for discussion in the absence of public. So you're, we're not going to return to the minutes and take get those taken care of at the beginning. We set them aside. We take them. This one's in camera. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. the cast. Sorry, we kind of table them until we got our act together. And then okay, sorry. We're going to come sorry. back. I, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> back to Council Rabbit for the minutes. Thank you very much, everybody. So we're back to item number four, Council Rabbit. You had some uh, pieces on the minutes. Um. Or are you going to let it go? Has everyone else got nothing else? Is everyone else saying they have nothing on the minutes? I had nothing. I made a comment. That was about it. 
Um, well, I guess I'm going to. There's something to obvious, see. Neville. I can't remember. It. You know, I have something, but as I said, I've lost that file because they're both at the same file name. I deleted one. Uh, let's hang on. Just let me park. Let's just say I accept the minutes. Yeah, or we could um, bring them back to. Uh, Municipal yeah, coordinator, help me here. How can we make this these minutes appear uh, in another meeting? Um, you could postpone it to the next meeting. Postpone the motion on the floor to the next meeting. Is it fine if we postpone it to the next meeting, Councilor? Yeah, I, we, I'm okay with these minutes. You're good with it? I think that so much of this stuff, it's such a, it was a while ago. We've discussed this in other, in other times. Um, there's no need to revisit this minutes. Okay, thank, thank you very much for your generosity on that. Okay. Quick so, question. Can I just ask a question? I mean, Neville, if you do find something that you find is an error is is that not something we could correct retrospectively at the next meeting if you read through it and you find something obvious that, that that's troubling yeah well I, I think it'll be okay i'm flicking through it now. okay thank you very much councillor brunner okay uh we're going to go uh, into close so, and a so discussion call the motion i'm gonna call the motion all right can i I'm sorry can can I I, so technicality i'm calling the motion on uh, receiving the November 30 and December 21st, sorry, December 1st, 2021 minutes uh, as circulated. Uh, that's all, uh, motion's been called. All those in favor, yes, opposed no. Yes, thank yes. you. Thank you very much for staff for keeping me on the straight and narrow. Uh, so uh, the reasons that we back to the discussion in the absence of public is personnel procurement legal matters. And at the <clears throat> meeting, be closed to the public on the basis of matters to be considered under the following sections of the community charter. And where required, the council does consider that matters could reasonably be expected to harm the interests of the municipality if they're held in public. And this is community charter sections 91, A, C, E, G, I, J, and N, and section 92 and B. Council does not anticipate reconvening the open meeting for any purpose other than to adjourn the meeting generally and report out if applicable. I will put that forward that motion. I have a seconder. Thank you. All those in favor of the reasons to go into public and what we will do afterwards, please confirm by saying yes. Those opposed, no. Yes. One more. Carrie, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Uh,